ably represented today. Erudite speakers and moderators, members of the Fourth Estate here present, Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I'm greatly humbled by the presence of everyone in this hall this morning. I must confess, it is the warmest of support I, as a person, and Freelance News as a platform have why the FLAIR leadership session. Despite the plethora of sessions with focus on leadership across the country, well, the answer may not be quite as simple. But this will suffice. Suffice, sorry. Despite the abundance of women and material resources, it is sad that there is no wholly owned Nigerian business or brand that has lived beyond the 50 years mark. Like our public sector, most private sector leaders are towing the immediate gratification path, running their enterprises on the premise of self actualization and instant returns to those in their immediate circle. Whereas, other nations of the world thrive on the grit of our people in providing solutions that impact on their collective existence, comfort, and prosperity for the long term. The African society is boggled down with shallow, disjointed, and greed powered plans for the future, with visions only crossing the five year mark. Hence, the FLAIR leadership session was conceived as a platform to engineer a focus on the paradigm of a long-term sustainable impact on the society in the visioning and the management of public and private sector groups, organizations, and bodies. As organizers of this session, we feel blessed and humble that for the meeting edition, we have a, line, we have a rich lineup of 10 seasoned speakers and resource person highlighting some of the Nigerian most accomplished leaders, subject matter experts, trailblazers, and catalysts, cutting across all the public and private sectors, with many years of experience to do justice to the team of this inaugural conference. Setting the tone for the deliberation today is our, was supposed to be uh, the distinguished keynote in the person of the distinguished uh, Honorable Minister of Interior, Obeni Rao, Arede Shola, a respected political leader and former governor of Osho State. But I was informed that he won't be here present because he's out of the country, but he will be represented. The keynote will lead us, will lead up the National Periscope Discourse that will be ably handled by the distinguished panel. Led by Chief Ola Binton Famutimi, Chairman Tricontinental Group. Famutimi is an accomplished administrator, industrialist, and renowned bilateral trade promoter, who has made an indelible impact in the Nigerian business space and has dedicated a large part of his life to the advancement of entrepreneurship, commerce, and socio-economic development of this country. He will be bringing his wealth of experience to enhance the discussion around the theme of the conference. Other esteemed speakers who will, who will join the first panel session are Shegu Shomi, a public speaker and politician. Ola Wale Olale, Deputy Editor, this day newspaper. And Princess Kelechi. Please um, give me a few minutes while we read his um, profile. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. It's such an honor to be here with everyone of us seated here. And I'm so proud to be a part of this 
Leadership and Entrepreneurship Conference. So please all come together with me, the moderator. He is a native of Ensure Town, Calabar in Cross River State, and one of Nigeria's foremost female cowards, written, produced, directed over 100 different motion picture contexts in his over 25 years as a creative entrepreneur. Okay, some of his award winning works include Not My Will, Scandals, Blood Brothers, Pure Love, London Blues, Senseless, Nemesis, Girls Net Door, Images, Eldorado, Art Passion, Doctor Death, among several others. So the person we're bringing up on stage is also a first degree, he has a first degree in mass communication, and then he proceeded to earn an MBA in international business from Crawford University, Open State in Nigeria. You agree with me that this person is so vast in his knowledge. Not only does he have an MBA, he also has um, a professional certificate in film and television. And in 2016, in intellectual property, both from University of California, Los Angeles. He is a former president of the Director's Guard of Nigeria. He is a pioneer of the popular Nigerian movie industry called Nollywood with over 100 featured films. I think we can give him a round of applause, please. Let's appreciate him. He's one of us, okay? He's also founded the first film festival in Cross River State called the Tinapa Film Festival and Awards. I think that is so popular. Can we just give him a round of applause again? He's also a reservoir of classic materials and information on Nollywood, which include posters, jackets, and props dating back to over 25 years. So he's very knowledgeable in the subject matter. And I think if we all give him the audience, he's going to perform well together. So please make welcome with me, Mr. Fidelix Duca. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. Um, God bless you for hosting this amazing conference here today. So right now, um, we'll be calling on um, one of our panelists who um, is not yet present, and he will be able to represent it here. And that is no other but Chief Olapinton Famotimi, and that's the chairman of Three Continental Group. And he will be able to be represented by Chief, um, he will be able, uh, able to be represented by Engineer Adi Oye Neko. Engineer Adi Oye Neko is standing in the gap for Chief Ola Binto Famutumi. It's a delight to welcome the Managing Director of Palms Agency Limited, an oil service company. He's a graduate of electrical and electronic engineering. He's a member of many services and professional organizations. It's a delight to have you here, sir. You're welcome. Please, we can do better in a round of applause. Imagine, I was even looking at us when the music, uh, when the DJ was playing the music. I see some of us just moving our bodies slowly to the dance of the group. So, you are going to have a splendid time here. I just want us to be open at that, just like the convener has rightly told us. Let's be open at that. What we're doing is towards the enrichment and the betterment of our that are doing very well, if we're able to you know, find our strength and take responsibility and try and identify, it's very important to you know, build our confidence, take, see ourselves as leaders as well, that can take up whatever responsibility and challenges that the country is facing, try as much as possible to solve it, I think we will be fine. We have a lot of youth that are unemployed today, which shouldn't be, but you know, because they are looking at easy way out. They're looking for you know, give away. I think that's one of the problem also that we're going to be discussing today. To encourage each and every one of us, you know, to find our strength, you know, and then solve, I mean, problems. And if you're solving problems, <laughs> I think eventually, you know, whatever you're looking for becomes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Um, 
I think you made a very important point looking for new ways. And that's the biggest, the big challenge with Nigeria today. Everybody is looking for the easier way, the easiest way to just um, survive. I think it has been a big challenge in leadership in Nigeria. And I'm hoping to go back to how I started this conversation. I'll go back to engineer day or the company. I want to ask you, what do you, what's your definition of leadership? I know you said you talk about those who have had traditional leadership in the past, but what is your definition of leadership? Yeah, uh, leadership is, uh, is context. It's context. Uh, I would describe that as uh, someone who has capacity to lead. And uh, what are those capacities that you need to have to lead? You must have empathy. You must have knowledge. And without knowledge, there are no people, there are no body that you can lead. And of course, still coming back to what we've been talking about. You must have vision. Yes, uh, the vision could be short term and it could be long term. But the visionary leader must have long term vision. I know if you come down to this, uh, our space in the country Nigeria, you must have sure that far that this is a multinational state. And to actually establish and create a national vision agenda uh, may not be as easy as you expect someone from uh, maybe uh, a country like uh, Ghana or Togo, talking about population, our cultural difference different geographical space in this country. So leadership in Nigeria will be one that is ready to accommodate and unify all those multinational states. When you fail in doing that, you will actually fail as a leader in this country. And this part of the world. And that's why we have seen all this. That Nigeria is a bit difficult to govern. Because we have many things that you are partnering with. Today is security. Tomorrow is corruption. And don't fall down to how we are led. When you have a leader that doesn't listen to you, that's not that point of good leadership. A good leader must listen and get feedback from his followers. So that I can take a run with those feedback to make better decisions and to make better policy policy. So when you have a leader that doesn't listen and doesn't like feedback, or you have one who glamour to listen to psychopaths, you discover that the community, the states, or the country we are in living. Continue to explore the partnership. Maybe I'll stop at that for now. Thank you, Mr. Uh, I think while you were speaking, one of the panelists came in. Uh, I think the MC would like to introduce him. Eh? Right. Yes, please, quickly. Uh, and I have a few questions for Engineer. All right. Um, so right now, um, ladies and gentlemen, please join me as a welcome. Um, one of our um, panelists just stepped in, um, trying to... Olawale, Olale, please can please put our hands together as we welcome you on the stage. Mr. Olale is a, noted, is a noted political journalist with a demonstrated history of working in this day newspaper for 21 years. He is skilled in politics, news writing, and breaking news. A strong media and communication professional. He graduated from Ogun State Polytechnic and Lagos State University. 
where he backed a master's degree in communication studies. Please, can we put our hands together for Mr. Olawale?